Hey guys, Drew here. Just coming back to ask you to please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts or whatever streaming service you use. Uh, really, it is super helpful whenever someone types in micro into a search field. If there are more ratings and reviews, then we come up in the search results. So you really can help people find us. Uh, and we'd super, super, super appreciate it. So please go do that. Thanks so much. And back to the show. Welcome to Micro, a podcast for short but powerful writing. I'm your host, Drew Hawkins. Pressure cookers, arid soil, and too many Pokemon cards. This episode uses time as a landscape and plays with the concept of origin. Our first piece is a poem that encapsulates the passage of a day, both cyclical and final. It's called The Sun Turns on Us. It was written by Sihe and Tuli and published in the Hellbore Press. Enjoy. The sun turns on us. Morning. Resurrections of the summer sun. The moon has left behind wet blades of grass. A surreal fear of the ultraviolet with gradual illuminating intensity. Voya of ashen brown skin. Arid soil, volume and space. Our knees bludgeoned soft. Soft, as my mother tongued please, left nestled on the cartilage of years. Daytime. Peak of the sun, onslaught of the ultraviolet scorching, ruthless, relentless beat down, the jamb. And for us, there is no shade here. Afternoon. Faith as my misshapen knees landing hard underground again. Lines of my palms to touch, my lips before they say amen. Burden of the heat comes down, piercing rays of the sun to kill me. Sihe Ntuli is a South African poet from Durban. His latest chapbook is called Rumblin' from Ulanga Press. You can find him on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sihe X Ntuli. Our second piece plays with possibility, telling two stories at once, what is and what could have been. It's called Imagining My Father If, Instead of My Grandfather, He Had Been His Own Father. It was written by Matthew Mastrakova and published in Hobart After Dark, a.k.a. Had. Enjoy. Imagining My Father If, Instead of My Grandfather, He had been his own father. He would still have all his teeth. He would still shave his stubble daily, even though he doesn't need to. He would have invited his friends over to watch Yankee games as a kid, while his mother prepared platters upon platters of food for them to devour between palmed cans of beer. He would still use the phrase, when I was a kid, but I could recklessly roll my eyes at the phrase. He would be a wine guy. He would have at some point found mindfulness, and whenever I visit, he would insist we meditate while he plays that one Enya playlist on his brand new surround sound speaker system and would fall asleep 10 minutes in. He would be really into Enya. He would have a bachelor's degree in business, or maybe sports medicine? (laughs) He, He would still not have been a good little league coach. 
I would still be too soft for him to handle without bruising in some way. He would argue with my mother over whose family to spend which holiday with, and their voices would never leave the room they were arguing in. He would have more than two pictures of his parents. He would be as open about his feelings as he is about his medical issues. He would not have as many feelings about Big Vitamin. He would still have a too long and too convoluted theory for explaining John F. Kennedy's assassination. He would have looked out into the stands at every single baseball and basketball and football game and seen at least one person cheering for him specifically. He would still have bought me more Pokemon cards than any one person deserves in a lifetime. He would own the largest collection of Matchbox cars in the tri-state area, but he would not let anyone else touch them. He would still have driven 300 miles, so I did not have to celebrate my first birthday after moving out alone. He would know the names and ages of all his nieces and nephews. He would have grown up knowing the name of his mother's neighborhood instead of learning it through the internet decades after she died. He would still use the phrase, when I was a kid, and I would be excited to hear how the sentence ends. Matthew Mastrakova is a writer based in New York. You can find them on Twitter at Matt Mastrakova, on Instagram at Bidoofaloof, or on their website at MatthewMastrakova.com. Our third and final piece tells one story of one person split across time and space with an unfulfilled yearning. Written by Jaya Wagle and published in the Jellyfish Review, it's called Toba Tech Sang. Enjoy. I'm Toba Tech Sang, caught in the partition of myself between America and India. My upper half in the country, I voluntarily exiled myself to, while my lower half, Sunk deep in the rich, loamy soil, slacks with every passing year, because in a corner of my brightly lit kitchen, brass, silver, and sandalwood statues of baby Krishna, Lakshmi, and Ganesh sit dusty in their miniature wooden mandaps, and silk, cotton, and chiffon saris in use of peacock blue, vermilion, and emerald green, neatly folded in rectangles, rest in cotton boxes, and my wedding gold sits dull and inert in a red velvet pouch because I wear skins of Old Navy, Gap, and Banana Republic that dominate my closet. And when I read Monto, I lose his essence in the English translation. So I read Prem Chand in vernacular, but can't decipher, decipher phrases and words and get lost in the regional complexities that slip from my linguistic memory while my epicurean senses search for firm mangoes, tender coconuts, green guavas, and bitter melons because continents separate me from the sensory overload of crowded smog-filled streets where buses, rickshaws, cars, and motorbikes drive recklessly, roadsides vend- roadside vendors sell food, clothes, vegetables, fruit and cheap plastic goods, and pedestrians and cows don't follow traffic rules. And when I miss the ordered chaos of the cities I left behind, I appreciate the wide three-lane streets and four-way stops and roundabouts of my American suburb, where neighbors' cars are parked in the driveways and garages are filled with used furniture and lawn equipment, refrigerators and exercise machines, because there is so much space here, but I sometimes miss the intimacy of the one-bedroom living room kitchen house with the sunny balcony and the 21 narrow stairs it took to climb up to the second floor 
of the house that my father built, the first floor rented out like so many other homes on our streets, where I grew up with neighborhood aunties watching over me while my parents went to work, and who, sitting on three-legged stools and rickety chairs on their balconies, taught me to cross-stitch and knit, skills I'm slowly forgetting and have no patience for in this new land where it is cheaper to buy ready-made than handmade, which is why the bedsheets I embroidered for my trousseau lay forgotten on a shelf in my closet while I shop for 500 thread count cotton sheets and pillows and have learned words like box springs, shams, and dust ruffles. But every evening as I cook dinner with my Hawkins pressure cooker and roll rotis and puff them up on the blue flame of my GE burner, the whistle of the pressure cooker and the sharp, pungent aroma of the mustard seed as for Dita tempering pulls my feet towards dish, my homeland, my parents, my siblings, while my heart resides in my adopted country, my family, my friends, and Toba Take Singh is where I am. Jaya Wagel is a former Indian expat and current U.S. citizen whose nonfiction has appeared in Barrel House, Pithead Chapel, Rumpus, Bending Genres, Janus Literary, Maudlin House, and elsewhere. She can occasionally be found on Twitter and Instagram at Desi Soccer Mom. That's our show, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Micro is edited and curated by the wonderfully talented Dylan Evers and produced and hosted by the OK talented me, Drew Hawkins. Our theme song is by our good friend Matt Ordez. You can find more of our shows on LitHub, our website at micropodcast.org, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And do check out our new interview series with Kirsten Renault called Five Cues with Kirsten. You won't be disappointed. We've got a full transcript of this episode up on our website and subtitles for anybody who needs it on our YouTube page, which you can find links to on our website as well. Check out the show notes for links to the pieces featured on this episode and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Podcast Micro. Thanks for listening.